I'm not ready. Then I came to see you. Welcome, everybody. Would you please rise and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance? Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Madam Secretary, would you do the roll call, please? Mike Alferi? Here. Sonia Bragic? Absent. Jennifer Bretz? Here. Diane Sibatoni? Here. Vince D'Augustine? Here. Jeannie Smith? Here. Paul Ward? Here. Scott Learn? Here. Tony Bompiani? Here. Thank you. Thank you. And we'll move on to mission statement. Dr. Walecki? Sure. Good evening, everyone. The Hemfoot Area School District and its commitment to excellence shall engage and educate all students for personal success through a shared responsibility with the student, family, and community in a safe, secure, and nurturing environment. Thank you. And we'll move on to uh, superintendents. But before we do, I want to inform the public we did meet an executive session from 5.30 to 7 o'clock this evening on personnel and some legal issues. Um, so we'll move on to superintendent's report at this time. Dr. Walicki. Thank you, Dr. Bompiani. We actually have several parts to our superintendent's report this evening. First, uh, we have Mr. Kevin Clockerty joining us in regards to a curriculum update for AP government. Mr. Clockerty will share the rationale for why we are in need of piloting some new curriculum materials, and we are anticipating using these materials for the um, upcoming school year. With that, I will turn it over to Mr. Clockerty. Hi, folks. Hi, folks. Uh, Bear with me, I'm not used, used to sitting still, still and using a microphone. Uh, anyway, a um, couple, couple things real quick first off as I just want to ask. Thanks, thanks for being here. I know I, know I say, say this every time I come up for a board, board meeting, but the time you put in and your, your commitment, commitment to the community is important. important. It, 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 it's, it's one, one of those real Jeffersonian ideals. ideals. And, and I, know I know that especially for those of you that I haven't had a chance to meet, you don't know how much time you spend on the board until you, you do it. And now your whole life is sucked into what you do on the school board. You're in the community. People will come up to you and have great ideas on how to solve all the problems in the world. And it won't cost us any money. Uh, so I appreciate your time. Appreciate what you're doing here. And also, just real quick, props to Dr. Willicki and her team uh, for getting us through this change in the world that we've gone through. That I know some of you have spent time in a classroom, but those of you that haven't, we shut down the schools on the 13th of March, took a week to catch our breath. Dr. Willicke and the folks came up with a plan, interchanged with the teachers, interacted with the teachers more collaboratively. We changed up everything we do in a week and we got our kids through. And that's significant. And that doesn't happen unless the entire district is working together, unless we listen to each other, we come up with ideas. So again, I don't know that you get that kind of feedback, but from the standpoint of a teacher, I, I, I wanna make sure you know that the, the, the teachers themselves, we appreciate the work, the collaboration that we had with, with Dr. Willicki. All right, what brings me here is the AP classroom, uh, AP government class. Um, just so we're all on the same page, AP government, a, any AP class is a college level course. The curriculum is designed by the AP folks, by the college board folks. And at the end of the class, at the end of the course, kids have an opportunity to take a test. If they do well on that exam, they can get college credit. The College Board slowly has been revising everything they do, all of the different AP classes. Two years ago, it was time for Gov, uh, United States Government and Politics. The rollout was a little bit problematic, and the AP folks did a little bit of a revision, 
coming into this past school year. We talked about getting new textbooks at that point, and we decided let's wait, let's see where we're at. And that brings us to now. We would have had this discussion a couple months ago, but the world blew up. So the revision of the AP Gov course, we expected tinkering on the, on the edges. It was a significant rewrite. And the, the course in the past was very fact-based, very know this, know this, know that. There were 50 Supreme Court cases, things like that. Now it's much more along the lines of interconnectedness and how does this government agency interact with that group. Textbooks we have are great for the old course. They just, they just don't work for what we need them now. We're not the only district in this, in this boat, but we can only be concerned about ourselves. So, Anita Mash, the social studies principal here at the high school, she and I had been talking about this for a while and we, we brought it to, to uh, Dr. Willicki. And we knew we needed to do something. And I'll give all the props to Anita Mash. She came up with this plan where we're able to pilot a program this year. Online textbooks combined with a classroom set, I believe we're going with. See how it goes this year. And if it meets our needs, then we can look at a bigger expenditure down the road, but we can knock it down now. We can get the materials the kids need for college level course. We can get them a textbook at minimal expense this year. So that's where we're at. That's how we got to this point. Um, it's where we need to go. Is there any questions? My mask keeps falling off. Is there any questions I can ask for any answer for anybody? Board questions? All right, fantastic. Thanks, guys. Thank you for a very yeah, nice yeah. report, um, Coach Clark. Here. How's your team look? Thank you, Mr. Clockerty. Our next item is in regards to an update with our school reopening. Um, first, I'd like to share, we had announced that it was our um, original plan to approve our reopening plan this evening. However, on Thursday, July 16th, PDE released additional guidance, and that guidance is rather comprehensive, and as such, we have decided to delay adopting our plan this evening so that we have time to incorporate the new information. So we anticipate presenting our plan at either our August 10th or August 17th meeting. We do have additional information though in regards to reopening, specifically to our elementary cyber program development. And there has been a lot of work on, that has been facilitated by Dr. Connor. So I'm going to turn the presentation over to Dr. Connor at this time in that regard. Thank you, Dr. Walecki. So first and foremost, um, when the board had discussed with the administration the need to look at our cyber option and expand it um, down to our elementary level, it was something that we were excited about, but we didn't think it was gonna be something that was going to be needed so quickly. Um, We were able to get a committee together um, as soon as the school year let out in June, consisting of a few teachers, a few central administrators, um, a couple elementary principals, and a parent representative to start working on our elementary cyber program. And I, I am gonna just tip my hat to those individuals. Um, and amazing when you get a, a, a group of um, smart 
dedicated uh, individuals together what they can accomplish. And um, they've really done an amazing job. And the, the work that was uh, looked at with that committee um, over several meetings was we investigated competing um, programs. And we looked at several different public cyber schools in the state of Pennsylvania, what they had to offer and what we needed to do to make sure we were competitive here at Hemphill Area School District. Um, what was really nice is that we have several parents in our district that are teachers on, at those programs. So it, I mean, we've had a plethora of, of individuals to contact and, and reach out to. We also, through the Human Resource Department, um, were able to reallocate one staff member from uh, Stanwood Elementary, Mrs. Pollock, and she's done an amazing job starting um, investigating and, and really putting the program together. Um, and obviously, if you can't beat them, you have to join them, and that's what we're looking at with um, our cyber program ourselves. So the biggest key right now is marketing. Um, we had a letter that Dr. Wilicki sent out to the entire district uh, back on June 26, I believe, was our school uh, reopening plan discussion, our, our first salvo to, to the uh, community as to what was going on. And in that letter, we asked parents if they were considering um, a cyber program to please go to our district website and fill out a pre-registration form. And um, that marketing uh, has really taken off. Um, I think after the first week, we had 70 some um, people who had expressed interest. As of last Thursday, we have 146. And as of today, we had 155. So we are um, continuing to um, blow up, as they say. Um, the biggest thing that we really feel is necessary is a personal contact. So based on that pre-registration form, what we've done is the elementary, elementary principals have contacted every single one uh, of those individuals who've um, reached out, every parent, has had conversation or is, um, as I mentioned today, we had um, a few more. So we are in the process of reaching out. We wanna make sure that parents realize that even if you take our cyber program, you're still part of Hemphill Area School District. And um, hopefully when this all subsides, that you're coming back to brick and mortar. And um, we have a, another committee meeting coming here s soon. We'll be planning our information sessions. They are scheduled for the first week of August. August 4th and August 5th, we have three different sessions planned. Um, parents can sign up for anyone they would like, and it, it'll be done virtually, and they'll be recorded if a parent can't make it. Here's the 146 as of last Thursday, as I mentioned. You can see that we have um, a, a breakdown at, across each of the grade levels, kindergarten, first, second, third, fourth, and fifth. So it's a good thing that we have people who are interested in our cyber program keep the tax dollars here at home, but at the same sense, it, it does pose a problem in how to staff it and, and make sure that we, uh, we do it the right way. Uh, we wanna make sure it's a success. So that's what we're working on now to make sure we, we have it supported. Um, obviously, having one staff member is not gonna cut it, um, but it's a good problem to have. And then, as I mentioned, next steps. Um, we have a committee meeting next week. We're looking at a guardian child learning contract to make sure that um, parents who sign up for this, child that signs up for this, that they know what, what comes with it. Um, expectations, but also um, that the parent is a pivotal piece of, of education in, in a cyber environment. Um, the principals and myself have been really, really looking hard at how this interacts with the elementary schedule. Um, obviously, the, this year is a unique challenge anyway, um, as we plan our school um, reopening plans, but I, I wanna make sure that these students are accounted in each of the buildings so when we transition back, um, it's seamless. Then also, we have to make sure we get our materials to them um, accordingly so that the um, information sessions, that's first week of August, we're looking at the second, the third week of August for the distribution of materials um, and then the preparation of staff for this program. I know I just spoke a lot at you. Is there any questions at this time about our elementary cyber program? Board members, questions? Yes. And next we have Mr. 
Brandon Rapp with a athletic update. Good evening, everybody. I uh, just wanted, you know, provide a, a brief update on you know, where our return to school plan is uh, with regards to our athletic programs. Uh, you know, recap. I believe June 22nd was the the last time uh, the board met and approved uh, the athletic uh, return to play plan. So we're almost a month in uh, to to phase one with our fall programs. So I just want to recap where we've where we've been at over the last couple of weeks. Uh, and then talk a little bit about where we'll look to move towards, uh, you know, as we approach uh, August and the start of uh, the start of the fall season. So, uh, for those that have not seen the, the latest report uh, from from Harrisburg and the PIAA, uh, is that the intentions at this point are for the PIAA uh, to start their season as regularly scheduled, which would uh, be an August 10th start for football in their heat acclimation. Uh, as well as an August 17th start for all of the other fall programs. Uh, so again, that, that's where we're at at this point. Uh, as things have been since March, uh, it's a fluid situation. It continues to change, you know, sometimes on a daily basis or, or uh, you know, even more frequent than that. So uh, we'll continue to monitor that, but I just wanted, you know, everybody to be aware that that is the latest uh, update that we've received uh, from the PIAA at this point. Uh, so with, with phase one of our uh, return to play plan, uh, that opened up the, the possibility for our fall 9th through 12th grade programs to begin practicing. Uh, many of those have done that uh, to this point. Uh, not all started right away, uh, but at this point in time, the majority of our, our fall varsity programs have at least started phase one uh, where they have, have began to practice. Uh, that has gone very well. Uh, you know, I think the plan uh, that, that you all had implemented, uh, you know, I think really w was a cautious approach uh, that, that not only our coaches, uh, but our student athletes and the families really embraced. Uh, and I think that has allowed for a very smooth startup for our fall program so far. Uh, and, you know, we've had uh, very minimal issues. And, and again, I just can't speak enough to what our fall coaches uh, and, and the student athletes and the families have done embracing, um, you know, the screenings uh, and the precautions that we've put in place to allow uh, athletics to return in, in a safe environment. Uh, so that has gone very well. Uh, so moving forward, what we would look to do uh, is allow those fall programs that have been practicing for two to three weeks to advance into phase two and phase three of, of our return to play plan, uh, which again just allows more sports specific activity. Uh, phase one focused heavily on, on conditioning, making sure that our athletes were healthy uh, after you know, a number of months off. As they work through phase, phase one, they'll move into more sports specific activity. So uh, we're gonna look to allow those teams that have, have uh, you know, been practicing for a few weeks to transition into that. Uh, and we will look to allow our fall middle school <coughs> programs uh, to have the opportunity to get started. So at this point, it's been nine through 12. But we also recognize that, uh, you know, the potential for our fall seventh and eighth grade programs to start, we want to make sure that those students have an opportunity uh, to condition ahead of their season to make sure that they are healthy and, and in the necessary shape uh, to begin their season. Uh, so we will look to uh, allow those programs to start uh, you know, sooner rather than later. And then at that point then, if things continue to go uh, smooth, then we will allow our winter and our spring programs to begin in August, uh, where they will start with their phase one, uh, begin their conditioning approach, uh, and, and work through their phased uh, process as well. So um, again, that, that's kind of it uh, in, in a nutshell. Uh, we're gonna continue to monitor the situation uh, should things, uh, you know, change. We're in close contact with a number of, of neighboring school districts as well as uh, the WPIL and the PIAA on what their guidance is, not only for our fall season, but make sure that uh, you know, we're taking appropriate steps with our winter and our spring teams as well. Um, but I, again, I just can't speak enough to you know, the approach that our coaches and student athletes and families took, uh, and I would expect that will continue. And I think what that's allowed is for us to get our fall programs back and operational uh, and, and really into that sports specific activities uh, with, you know, where we could put that focus on them and now we can shift to allow those winter and spring teams uh, to begin their activities as well. So, any questions? Brandon, do you, have a, you don't have a specific date for the winter practices, winter sport practices start? Is it just two weeks out or 
Is it a two week time frame for phase one? It is a two week, a minimum of two week time frame, uh, okay. frame for phase one. So the, the plan that, that would be approved tonight would allow for them to start um, August 1st. Uh, we would anticipate that most would start August 3rd with that being that Monday. So they would be eligible to start August, uh, August 3rd. Um, part of that process would involve the training with the coaches to, to explain how phase one works and the steps that need to be taken. Um, so the plan would allow for those winter and spring teams to begin practicing August 3rd. I think what the plan allows for us to do, though, is monitor and make sure that, you know, should additional restrictions or, or other guidelines come into play from, you know, the Department of Health, CDC, the governor's office, whatever the case may be, then we can modify accordingly. Um, but our intention at this point would be to do the training with the coaches, allow them to get information out to their students and families um, and, and so that all the necessary precaution um, and, and preliminary steps can be taken so they could start the 1st of August. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Other questions from board members? Brandon, thank you right, for a great thank report. Thank you, guys. Appreciate it. <coughs> Tammy, um, or, or Tony, somebody. Before we move on to hearing of the citizens, can you, I just want to make sure we're, we're aware. We did have a reopening plan on July 16th, correct? We, we, we had one, we were ready to go, correct? Correct. There were new guidelines that came out from PDE on July 16th that we need to incorporate into our plan. I do not view it as major revisions. I view it more as some tweaking. So we did have a presentation right. all set for this evening, right. but felt it was best to delay. Okay, I just want to make sure if anybody's listening that, that they knew we had one ready. Absolutely, but we've been working on our plan again. every yeah. day, yes. Right. It's coming together very well, but we will okay. be ready to present it. And Thank we have you. shared much of the information at the town hall meeting, and we're happy to announce we are going to hold another town hall meeting. We're looking at the first week of August. So that date will be announced. We'll use our new Facebook page that um, Pam Givasevich has been working very hard, so if you're not um, following us on Facebook, please do, and we will announce the date and time of our next town hall meeting. Can you clarify that page? Because there's several out there. It's the Hempfoot Area School District official page. Thank you. Great question, Mr. Alferi. I, I want to take a moment to thank Mr. Rapp for your, your presentation as well. Um, very informative. Just, just thinking, boy, today's day 20 on the job, and it seems like you've been here already for several weeks. You've jumped right in and taken over. Um, I'd also like to just announce we had a wonderful graduation graduation ceremonies on Saturday. Um, I have to say I, it was perfect from beginning to end, other than a little warm. Uh, yeah, it was, it was a little steamy, but uh, we were so happy to be able to finally hold a graduation ceremony that was so well deserved um, for our graduates. So it was a great day. Um, certainly, we give thanks to um, the high school administration, the office staff, maintenance, custodial. Um, and I, I really don't want to go into names of teachers because I know I will forget someone, but I do have to say that Dave Uring and Todd Brittani are um, very instrumental in the planning. So for everyone who was a part of that day, I, I just want to say thank you because it truly came together and it was um, held very differently. We certainly wanted the seating to be arranged a bit differently to assure that all parents had visibility. So there was a lot of work that went into the planning and I just want to say thank you because it was a success because of the hard work of everyone involved. And that concludes my report. What a great report it is, too. And just before we get to the hearing of citizens, uh, Pam, <clears throat> I did want to make a couple statements to the public. Um, the board has been very involved with the administration, um, listening to their reopening plan several times, discussing it, uh, bring up our thoughts and our concerns as it relates to t talking with staff, as it relates to talking with some of the public and 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 importantly, parents about their children that are going to be coming to this environment and living here. And I just want you to know that your board works for you. And you can contact us anytime on the Facebook page or maybe through an email or however you want to do that or email our secretary. And we'll get back to you and answer your questions. And we asked uh, Dr. Willicke for the next uh, town hall meeting, the board will be involved. Uh, we will be there supporting the administration, uh, being involved to answer a couple questions if we have to. Uh, we brought we bring things up all the time to Dr. Willicke, and, and I, for one, and any other board member can chime in later, but I, for one, am, am very confident and very, very relaxed with what Dr. Willicke and her, her staff is coming up with. It's, it's a great plan. Um, 
yes, I mean, you know, I'm, I've been big pushing this tax thing because if we lose children to cyber school, we will be hit hard. It will hurt our budget. But more important, we're pushing very hard for the best education we can have, for the most seamless um, transfer to normality that we can get. And we are committed to that, just committed to it. We've brought up questions. I mean, this has become a political issue, and, and you, you'd have to be deaf, dumb, and blind not to see the fact that there is a political environment behind or involved in this, not behind anything involved in it. And be that as it may, um, things can change in a heartbeat, just like they've changed in a week, and we have to be as resilient as we can to change, and the board feels that way too. We would love to open up as regular. We would love to bring your children back and put them in a school setting that they're used to and something that they're comfortable with. And many of you parents, I'm sure, want that. But we need to make sure that we take into consideration everybody's feelings, everybody's concerns, uh, and, and the reality that there is a problem out there that we need to address and move on with. Dr. Licky was talking about the graduation and your staff and you did a fantastic job. But more important than that, these seniors did a fantastic job. To sit out on that field when it was 95 degrees out, and believe me, it was 10 degrees hotter at least on that field with masks on. And they came, and you know, they didn't really have to because they already received their diploma. They didn't have to be there. They came for us. They didn't come for them. And that's how I look at it. And we've got a fine group of children in this whole school district. And one of the things I talked about to them was the fact that the younger kids realized and saw how great these older kids were when they put out their video for the children in early April. It brought tears to everybody's eyes when they did that, and they led, and they continue to lead. And to be able to go through something like that and discuss the fact that we have opportunities to change things, and I overheard Dr. Willicke talking to one of the staff about keeping the ramp up there and putting it a little bit different so that in the future we'll do similar things and make it easier to address the students and to have the students come up. So I think everything's coming into place. We will have the town hall meeting. We want your concerns to us. If you have ideas or thoughts, what makes it easier for you to come back to our school for cyber school, let us know. We want to make ours the best school we can get. And, and we have the best school. We want to make it easiest transition for you too. Any board members want to add to that or talk about it? Okay, then we'll go to hearing of citizens, Pam. I didn't receive any hearing of citizens. Okay, must have scared them all away, huh? <laughs> Dr. Bompiani, I will mention with student reps who are not with us this evening but will be in a, at a, in a future meeting, the video that you mentioned that was created by the students was actually um, led by Gianna Richardson, who will be one of our student reps. So we are looking forward to having her um, serving on the board, as well as um, Vice President Jacob Reifer. So we're looking forward to working with both of them. Thank you, Dr. Willicke. And if that video shows anything about her character, we've got a, a good person coming on here, I'm sure. Um, solicitor's report, Mr. Brunga. Uh, Mr. President, nothing to report this evening, sir. Okay, thank you. And we'll move on to Board Secretary's report. We have three nights of agendas, June 8th, the 15th, and 22nd meeting minutes to be approved? Yes. Do I hear a motion from the board to approve them? I move we approve the minutes. I second. Motion by Jeannie, second by Mike. All those, any additions or any concerns about the minutes as they were written? Hearing none, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposition? That motion carries, the minutes are approved. Buildings and grounds and transportation. Paul, it looks like there's nothing on the agenda for that tonight. Correct. And thank you, and we'll move on to educational programs. Uh, Jeannie, would you mind taking that? I will, thank you. I move that we approve E2620 through E3220 as written. Second. Motion by Jeannie, second by Diane. Is there, are there any questions on any of the minutes, or any of the um, motions? Hearing none, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposition? That motion carries. Jeannie, anything else on that? No, thank you. That concludes my report. Thanks, Jeannie. And we'll move on to personnel committee. Diane? Thank you. I am going to um, take some of them separately, okay? 
I move that we approve P9220, that the resignation for personal reasons for Dr. Connor, Assistant Superintendent, be accepted. I'll second. Motion by Diane, seconded by Paul. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposition? The motion carries. I move we approve P9320 that Dr. Matthew Connor be approved and appointed to serve as the Assistant Superintendent for Secondary Education and perform the duties as described in the board's job description for the term effective July 1st, 2020 through June 30th, 2025, subject to the terms and conditions of the negotiated employment contract. Second. Motion by Diane, seconded by Jeannie. He wasn't gone long, and I hope you do dock his pay for the first <laughs> <laughs> Any con comments or concerns, or comments or questions? It was just nice to have worked with him. I appreciate it. <laughs> <laughs> Anything else? Hearing none, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposition? That motion carries, and congratulations, congratulations. Dr. Connor. Yay. Thank you. <laughs> uh, you should let him uh, just sit there for a little bit longer, Jane. Moved on. <laughs> Go ahead. I move that we approve P9420 through P9720. I make a request. Yeah. Um, Go ahead, Paul. I mean, uh, Scott. I request that we table. Wait, Paul, or Scott, before you do, let's. Um, She's already made the motion. But we don't have She's a second. She's made the motion. We don't have a second yet. We're going to need a second on that. Um, do I have a second for the? I'll second it. That's a second for the group of motions. Now, Scott, go right ahead. Yeah. I'd like to uh, request that we table P9520 until further discussion can be uh, partaken in for, the, for that position. Okay. Is there a second to that? A second. Okay. There, there's no discussion on a table, a request right. for a table. So we're going to vote it up or vote it down. So all those in favor of uh, tabling um, P9520, uh, signify by saying aye. 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 Uh, opposition? No. no. Would you pull the board? Yeah. We voted again. Voting to table. On the table. We're voting whether to table. Mm -hmm. Mike Alferi. Jennifer Bretz? Yes. Diane Sabatoni? No. Vince D'Augustine? Yes. Jeannie Smith? No. Paul Ward? Yes. Scott Learn? Yes. Tony Bompiani? Yes. Motion carries. Okay, so that six to two. particular motion mm -hmm. is tabled. Okay. And um, you want to move on to the other four, the three then? Three, yes. Yes. Uh, yes, and they are. They I'm sorry. Already moved and second. Uh, yes. Second. So that one's just pulled out. That so pulled we'll just. Out. The other four are on the floor for continued uh, okay. action. Any discussion on the other three motions that are on the floor? Any questions? Hearing none, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposition? Those three motions carry. Thank you, Don. You're Anything welcome. else on uh, personnel? Yep. Nothing, thank you. All right, thank you. And we'll move on to athletics, Vince. I move that we approve A-20-20 as written, which is the um, revised athletics health and safety plan, and that will include phase three. I second. Motion by Vince, seconded by Mike. Any discussion or questions? Hearing none, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposition? That motion carries. Anything else, Vince? Athletic committee meeting will be in August, where we'll schedule one. Right. Right. We thought we would wait until we had received some more guidance yeah. that would impact yep. the purpose for the meeting. Yes. I think Paul's going to take supplementals. Any further questions for Vince on athletics at all? Mm -mm. Okay. No. We'll move on to supplemental though, and without Sonia, Paul, you mind taking that, please? Sure. Um, so I put forth motions P. Or I'm sorry, S-04-20 through. S07-20, which includes coaching resignations, a new coaching appointment for volleyball, uh, recognition of 
club sport uh, coaches for club sports and recognition of volunteer coaches. Second. I second. second. Uh, motion by Paul, second by Scott. Any discussion, questions? Hearing none, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposition? Motion carries. Anything else on supplementals, Paul? No, that's it. Okay, and finance committee. Uh, Diane, would you mind taking that one? Yes, thank you. I'm going to do one singly also this time. I move that we approve P, or I'm sorry, F7220, that the um, resolution appointing Wayne Wismar business manager as the liaison between Hemphill School District and Burke Marr for tax information. Motion by Diane, seconded by Mike. Um, any discussion or questions? Hearing none, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposition? That motion carries. I move that we approve F7320 through F7720, which includes um, a depository report from First National Bank, tax collector report approved, bills and payable in June approved, uh, bills and payable in July approved, and uh, permission for the business office to advertise uh, bids for digital planetarium system. Uh, we have to have a second first. Second. Motion by Diane. I'll second. Uh, second. Who's second? Paul? Sure. Yeah. Okay. Wait, Any what, questions? What's a digital planetarium system? It's replacing our current planetarium that we have in the district. Be sure you're right up to the mic, guys, so the public can hear. It's replacing our existing planetarium, which is failing. And mm -hmm. what we took a look at is just opposed to replacing it with the existing system that we have because it would exceed the threshold for bidding. We feel the need to advertise for a legal or for a bid prior to bring it to the board for a recommendation. But this is to replace the existing failing system at the high school. Any further questions? Uh, I just yes. want to ask a couple things. Um, Actually, it's just one thing. I see a lot on the bills to, bills to be approved. I see a lot of stuff that says COVID supplies. Are yes. You, are you finding that it's going to be a ridiculous amount of money to for well, hand sanitizers? Well, actually, what we're using those for is CARES funding that we're receiving from the feds is that we're uh, classifying as a COVID to make it easier to track awesome. so we can report it. Okay. So cool. this is not coming out of our, at this point, not coming out of our uh, regular budget. This is coming from CARES funding. Okay, thank you. Any other questions? Hearing none, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposition? Those motions carry. Thank you, Diane. Thank you. And move on to policy committee. Jeannie? I move that we approve PO 3620 and PO 3720. Um, 36 is the new, well, the revised discipline code that a committee of staff, board members, and parents, and students have worked on um, over the last several months. And it has been revised and um, proofed or looked over by our solicitor. And now we're approving it. And the uh, PO 37 is a fundraiser for the Lady Spartan Tennis Parent Club. Second. Motion by Jeannie, seconded by Diane. Any questions? I guess I have a question on the, um, the fundraiser for the tagging, which would be standing outside of Sam's mm -hmm. Club, especially right yeah. now. Is the, uh, I assume yeah. we have some guidelines that would apply to that, but it doesn't seem like necessarily now mm -hmm. is a great time to be doing that. I see the, the anticipated date, the start date, is September 26th. So it's certainly something we're looking at with all requests. We, we receive requests far in advance. And sometimes it's dependent upon the circumstances at the time of the event. Okay. Yeah, good point. Okay. We certainly want the safety of everyone. Yeah, I just want yeah. to make sure everyone's yeah. safe. Sure. Thank you. Any other comments or questions? Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposition? Both motions carry. Anything else, Jane? <coughs> no, thank you. Okay, we'll move on to technology committee. Scott? Put forth uh, two motions, T0520 and T0620. Uh, the first being approval to purchase 300 refurbished HP laptops, and the second for purchase of Chromebooks. 
Second. Motion by Scott, seconded by Diane. Any questions? Hearing none, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposition? The motion carries. Anything else, Scott? Nope. I did have a question for you on this, Dr. Willoughby, and sure. I, I hope this is an appropriate time to bring it up. Um, we have enough Chromebooks now for all of our students, right? With the CARES Act, we were able to get even brothers so and sisters to have them. We are getting closer. So the bid that is included um, here will provide additional Chromebooks which are needed at the elementary level. Um, I believe these are for the touch screen Chromebooks, which we feel are much better for children in grades kindergarten and first. So each year we do purchase new Chromebooks for our incoming freshmen, and those Chromebooks are already on site, and they will be receiving those. We're working on those plans for distribution. Um, also, for our sixth graders, they receive the repurposed Chromebooks of the exiting um, 12th graders. So, yes, our plan is to utilize the COVID funds, which I believe this is also a part of um, CARES funding that we're using to purchase the Chromebooks, so that we can, yes, have one-to-one. -one. So in the event that school were to close, um, every child would have his or her own Chromebook. And I hope I'm not um, out of line here. Talking to a taxpayer, and I brought it up to you earlier, one of the biggest concerns is our large district and the rural, rural part of it, that some parents, some students don't have uh, internet service and that we would be willing to try and help them get hotspots and other things to get them their internet service so they can join in virtually if they want to do online learning, correct? That's correct. And we did have Comcast that provided a great offer um, during the closing that we had in the spring. So certainly we direct families to any of those available opportunities, but we did provide um, hotspots to students who did not have that as an option. And just so uh, the people listening understand and know, uh, when we had our joint meeting with the township supervisors back in February, I think it was, we discussed about uh, having different committees to go and talk to different um, <coughs> aspects of government. And one of those ideas, one of the thoughts that we were going to talk about was trying to get internet service throughout our district. Uh, that has been put on hold because we haven't ha been able to have the meetings. We are going to be diligent in fighting for that and trying to get the best internet service we can throughout our entire district so everybody's on the same equal footing too. Uh, maybe to allay some fears of, of that type of education. Any other comments or questions from board members on any of this? Okay, hearing none, Scott, anything on Central West Mallet? Uh, nothing this month. We'll be having our next meeting uh, August 19th. Okay. And the intermediate unit, Jennifer? Um, the most important thing that we did was we elected our Westmoreland Intermediate Unit um, Board of Officers for the 2020-2021 school year. And our next meeting is next week. It's next Tuesday evening, virtual, um, July 28th at 7 p.m. Thank you, Jennifer. Any questions for Jen? On school board report, um, I have nothing, I'm, and I don't want to become more wordy, but the graduation was fantastic, Tammy, and, and um, thank you for thank that, you. And, and the rest of the staff as well. Uh, we'll move on to reports of standing committees. Uh, school Safety and Security Committee, Diane? There has been nothing Okay. right now. And Workman Comp, there's nothing there, correct? Correct. And we'll move on to Drug Awareness and Prevention, Jennifer? There's nothing new to report. And PSBA Legislative Policy Council, Jeannie. Thank you. Um, just a couple things. The Independent Fiscal Office has released its analysis of how the COVID-19 pandemic could impact local revenue, and they're projecting large reductions for school districts and municipalities. Um, the PDE has issued school reopening updates, as Dr. Wilicki mentioned earlier. Um, Two of those items that they're updating are emergency instructional time template and health guidance. Um, and again, as she mentioned, we're just gonna need to tweak ours a little bit to come into compliance. Um, the governor signed a school transportation bill, which is House Bill 364 and it amends the vehicle code to authorize the optional use of revolving and flashing yellow lights for school vehicles smaller than school buses, such as minivans and vans. And the lights can only be activated when the vehicle is preparing to stop or is, to, is stopped to load and unload students. 
Also, Act 38 establishes a $300 civil penalty for a violation if recorded by a camera system, which is on those arms or on the bus, and for illegally passing a school bus, the current law says the driver is liable for a summary offense. The penalty is distributed as follows, 250 for the school district, and they're to use that for installation and maintenance of the school bus cameras, 25 to the police department that reviewed the evidence, and $25 to the school bus safety grant program. Um, also on the governor's desk is an extension of property tax payment discount period and penalty relief, and that is Senate Bill 1125. It allows school districts to amend the dates and also the fines for um, being late, and that's due to um, the COVID as well. Also, um, a new bill, Senate Bill 836 is for electrocardiogram testing for student athletes. And this is one that is, requires information on EKG testing added to the various websites, educational literature and training sessions required for prospective student athletes, parents and coaches. The bill also gives families the option to request an electrocardiogram or EKG from their family's medical provider in addition to the standard participation physical exam. The cost of the EKG testing is um, paid for by the parent. Uh, that's um, to address the um, students who have these sudden cardiac uh, problems that causes death and um, it's to prevent those types of situations. Mm -hmm. uh, And from the federal government, we, they had a meeting um, to examine the technology that we're using now as an educational tool. And Frank Brogan, who is the Assistant Secretary for Elementary and Secondary Education in the U.S. Department of Education, really stressed that he hopes um, that distance learning can now provide opportunities and improve education in invaluable ways. For example, this might go to um, Mr. Clockerty. AP courses can be taught in rural areas that do not typically have the resources to do so for some students. And the students can participate in dual enrollment among schools, and students can transcend the, transcend the typical school day or school year schedule and take courses at unconventional times in attempts to close the gap and establish equity within the educational system. The CDC um, has provided consideration for slowing the COVID-19 in K-12 schools. And the HELP Committee holds hearings on getting back to work and school. And basically what they said was they felt that we could do this as long as we were following the existing guidelines and taking personal responsibility by washing our hands, wearing masks, and being mindful of other Americans who may be susceptible to the coronavirus. And that concludes my report. Thank you, Jeannie. And we'll move on to the foundation funds, anything? We are going to have a meeting on Thursday and it's going to be virtual. And I don't have anything to report at this time, but I will at our next board meeting. Good, and the Greensburg Hemphill Library, nothing? Diane? Uh, we are hoping to open, li uh, have limited opening in August. Uh, we, we do have the curbside, continue to have curbside, which is very successful. We have, uh, the first week we um, actually uh, dealt with 142 patrons. And so we, it, that's been very, very, very good. But like everyone else, we're being extremely careful and waiting to open. <laughs> We're, ha we're actually having a board meeting um, tomorrow, night, tomorrow night, and we're going to talk about reopening and what kinds of things need to be taken care of. Delmont uh, Library is actually open right now three days a week, so we're hoping to mimic a lot of what they're doing and, and start to open up for the public. Uh, what Delmont does is they have only a certain amount of people at a time, and many people have to make appointments to be able to come in. That concludes that report.
Okay, any questions for any of those three reports from board members? Okay, hearing none, any hearing of citizens for the non-agenda? And before we close, I'd just like to reiterate to the public to be sure, get on our Facebook site if you have questions, if you have concerns, get on the Facebook, get to us, or however you can get to us. And Dr. Walicki, maybe uh, someone can put on um, a list of things that they might have questions for and contact people for it or contact sure. places for it. Absolutely. And that way the public can be in as form as they can be. Any final thoughts from anybody? Hearing none, do I have a motion for adjournment? Second? Second. Like a uh, motion, second by Vince. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposition? The motion.